So when it comes to cosmology, there's basically two schools of thought. You got geocentrism, which has actually been the main school of thought since the beginning of time. Uh, every civilization basically believed this, that we lived on a flat, stationary, enclosed plane uh, where the sun, moon, and stars are the ones revolving around us. And you've also got heliocentrism, which tells us that we are spinning at over a thousand miles per hour, circling the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, while the whole galaxy is traveling through infinite space at crazy speeds. Um, and that was introduced uh, from um, uh, Copernicus in the mid 16th century. Uh, actually, Pythagoras came up with the idea before that, but Copernicus had already been working on a body of work that he was going to publish after he died. But the Vatican and the Jesuits basically persuaded him and pushed him to release it. And not only that, but come up with these other theories that would take people's minds away from the Creator, the God in Scriptures. So that's kind of how we got these two, these two schools of thought here. So now that we have the two schools of thought already set up, um, now we have to look at NASA. NASA was the biggest hurdle for me to get over when I started researching this. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about NASA. Um, a lot of people will show you the pictures of Earth and tell you that it's real, but in reality, NASA even admits that their pictures are fake and they're all CGI. Um, they're all composites. There's a lot of holes in what we accept as truth versus what NASA tells us. Um, you can look at the moon missions. Um, how, my question is, how could we have went to the moon if we can't leave low Earth orbit? And they admit that. They say the moon is like 238,000 miles away from Earth, but low Earth orbit is between that. So we've got a problem there. Um, we've got fake CGI pictures. Everything that you look at are all cartoons. Um, you cannot show me a real picture. They even admit that they have to be faked. Um, also, Operation Paperclip. This was after World War II when uh, the United States brought in over 300 Nazi occult scientists. And that's really how NASA was basically formed. And under, and under the leadership of uh, Werner von Braun, we kind of come up with uh, modern day uh, the science of rocketry and things of that nature. Um, but everything that they give us is, is a fraud, it's a fake. Um, if you look at his tombstone, he left a Bible verse on it that tells you, I believe it goes, and the firmament show with God's um, handiwork. The firmament in Hebrew means uh, rakia. That means a, a tangible thing to be beaten out as molten glass, basically a dome. And that was part of what all the early ancient civilizations believed that we had. So why would the godfather of rocket science in NASA leave that on his tombstone? That's a, that's a big one for me right there. Um, bubbles in space. And you, can, you can look on YouTube right now and you can see videos of uh, astronauts supposedly at the ISS or whatnot uh, with, with bubbles shooting up. I don't know how you get that in space. There's also a video of a, of a bee that flies around them as well. So I don't, I don't believe there's any bees out in space, so to speak. Um, but, you know, let's, let's talk about the curve for a minute. Um, the only time you've ever seen the curve is through NASA pictures. Uh, there's never been a scientific experiment that has shown the curve or any motion of the Earth at that. Um, in the 1800s, uh, the Michelson-Morley experiment, which we've never been taught about in school, was trying to detect uh, the Earth's motion around the sun, and it failed. And right after that is when Albert Einstein came out with his theory of relativity to basically kind of cover that up. So there's a lot of experiments that we have not been taught or told about. Um, let's talk about the horizon. 
when you go to the ocean, people will say that, well, you see that ship over there? You see it disappear out of your eyesight and go over the curve of the earth? Well, according to spherical trigonometry, eight inches per mile squared, that's the formula that they give us. So if you take a zoom lens and you zoom in on that ship, the whole thing comes back into view from the, from the bottom to the, the top, everything. And according to that formula, you shouldn't be able to see that. I'll give you another example. Uh, from the Indiana Dunes National um, Lakeshore, you can see the Chicago skyline from over 50 miles away. Uh, so that would be, you know, 50 times 50, 2,500 times 8, 20,000, uh, divided by 12 is roughly 1,667 feet of missing curvature. So we've, we've got another problem there. Um, and, and water is, is water's natural, uh, water naturally seeks and finds its own level. Um, I, I don't know how you can have water sticking to a ball. You cannot show me an experiment that does that. But if you ask anyone else, you know, who believes in heliocentrism, they'll tell you that it's because of gravity. Uh, but gravity is just a theory. Gravity can be explained from density and buoyancy. If something is more dense than the air, it falls. If it's lighter, like smoke or helium, it's going to rise. So, no gravity needed. Um, but, you know, like I said, there's no experiment that's ever been able to detect motion of the Earth. You cannot measure a curve. Um, people will say, well, we're just so, we're just so small. If you go up into an airplane, they say you can't see the curve because you're, you're too small and the, and the earth is so big. But at the same time, they'll tell you that you can see a ship disappear over the curve of the earth, which to me just sounds crazy. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, if you take into effect surveying, uh, if you look at canals, bridges, um, uh, uh, tunnels, and railroads, None of these people factor in the curve of the earth when they're building these things. So that's, a, that, that, that's another big point for me as well. Uh, a lot of people want to bring up uh, the Coriolis effect. So let's say a bullet is traveling 1,700 miles per hour and the sniper has to take into effect the spin of the earth. Why would that be if Tiger Woods doesn't have to do it on a par three? Uh, if you read that, there was actually an experiment that they did years ago where they were trying to see if there was any spin of the earth. So what they did was they took a hot air balloon and they raised it up, you know, pretty high and left it there for some hours. And then they dropped it back down to see what they landed in another place. And they didn't. They landed exactly where they started. So that to me doesn't make sense either. Um, I think what this whole thing does with heliocentrism is it steals your common sense. It tells you that your senses are wrong. Um, when you walk outside, you don't know, you don't, you don't feel any spin, but they tell you it's an illusion. You see the sun and moon fairly close to you and looking about the same size. They say that's an illusion too. Um, common sense is just not applied when you look at what we call science today. Honestly, in my opinion, it's more of a religion. It's more of scientism instead of actual science.